Here's an interesting fact. The name for the constellation Andromeda comes to us from ancient Greece. Most of our constellation names come from Greek astronomy. On the other hand, many of the individual stars in the sky have names that come from ancient Babylonian astronomy. That's why the name for the star that marks Andromeda's foot, Almach, has nothing to do with the Greek history of or the Greek mythology of Andromeda. The name Almach means karakol, karakol, however you might say it, which is desert lynx. Not Andromeda. Doesn't mean foot. In Greek mythology, Andromeda was a beautiful princess who the demigod Perseus rescued from a terrible sea monster. In ancient Babylonia, parts of Andromeda and the constellation Pisces were recognized as Ananitum, or the Lady of the Heaven. Andromeda is best seen from September to February. By the end of March, the constellation will sink below the northwestern horizon at sunset. After April, if you want to see this constellation, you could get up at 4 or 5 in the morning and find Andromeda in the northeastern horizon as it's rising. The stars move all night as the Earth spins, so you can see most constellations for the majority of the year if you're willing to stay up late or get up early. If you want to stargaze at 9 or 10 p.m., like me, then you can find Andromeda at its culmination, meaning its highest point in the sky, in November or December. That's a good time to, to look for this constellation. In fact, in my latitude, about 40 degrees north, Andromeda passes the zenith around that time. Zenith or zenith means directly overhead. So in other words, you would want to lie down so you don't hurt your neck looking up because you would be doing this to see it. That's how high it gets. The major stars in Andromeda are about average brightness, so the constellation shouldn't be too hard to spot, even if you're dealing with a little bit of light pollution. First, look north and see if you can find the Big Dipper. Follow the Big Dipper towards the North Star and continue across until you see an M-shaped constellation. Keep in mind the M-shaped constellation, Cassiopeia, may be on one of its sides. Then follow the top two points of the M, the direction they point, and you will quickly encounter a slightly crooked line of, rel of relatively four bright stars. That's part of Andromeda. If you watched my video on Pegasus, then you can also look for Pegasus because Andromeda is right up next to that constellation. Now that you know where to find Andromeda, let's outline the three brightest stars and the three brightest deep sky objects. Alpha Andromeda, or Alpha Rats, meaning horse's navel, is Andromeda's brightest star, sometimes. I'll tell you why in a second. It's a binary star with a visual magnitude of about 2.05. Now, Beta Andromeda, also known as Mirac, meaning the girdle, this star is known to dim periodically, but at its peak brightness, it does outshine Alpha Andromeda. So they compete for the brightest star. It is a red-hued giant star with a magnitude ranging from 2.01 to 2.10. It is the star that you'll want to use to find the Andromeda galaxy. More on that in a minute. Next, we have Gamma Andromeda, or Almach, meaning the caracal, caracal. It is an orange-hued, bright, giant star with a magnitude of 2.15. It is a multiple star system that, with magnification, can be resolved into a bright yellow star next to a dimmer blue star. But without binoculars, you'll just see the one star. There are more, but you would need more magnification to see the other stars in this system. This would be a fun star to observe through binoculars. For our first deep sky object, we have the Andromeda Galaxy, also known as M31. It is the nearest major galaxy to the Milky Way, and it's the most distant thing the average person can see with the unaided eye. Kind of looks like a fuzzy white dot if you know where to find it. At roughly twice the size of our galaxy, the Andromeda is the largest member of the local group, meaning our nearest neighborhood of galaxies. M31 has two faint companion elliptical galaxies, M32 and M110, which you can see in binoculars or a telescope. M31 is more than 2 million light years from Earth. To find it, hop two stars north of Beta Andromeda. It's about one degree northwest of this star here, New Andromeda. Next we have NGC 752. It's one of the next brightest deep sky objects with a magnitude of about 5.7. As a reminder, anything under 6 is possible to see with the unaided eye, more or less. But you'll definitely need a dark sky and good viewing conditions to see this one. 
NGC 752 is a loosely bound open star cluster that is almost 1500 light years away. Next we have the Blue Snowball Nebula and it is Andromeda's brightest nebula with a magnitude of 8.3. That's well within the limiting magnitude of my telescope, I'll provide a link to it down below, which tops out at about 13. The Blue Snowball Nebula is roughly 6,400 light years away, and with a 6 inch telescope you should even be able to see some of the bluish color emitted by this nebula. That's according to Wikipedia of course. A lot of times you just see um, fuzzy white colors um, with smaller telescopes. But whatever telescope you have, this one is worth checking out. That's all for this one. Let me know if you've spotted the Andromeda Galaxy with your eye or with a telescope, either way. It's fun to look for. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, keep learning, and remember to smile.